This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, adventure, and sci-fi film where apes are the apex species of a planet, and the humans are enslaved. This is Planet of the Apes. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. In today's modern world, humans have lived in the luxury of technology that we often forget about the other inhabitants of this planet. While we erect more infrastructures to build cities, we tear down trees and clear up forests that have become homes to many wildlife. Throughout history, many actions of men have caused great damages to nature. This film turns the tables on us, presenting a planet where the human beings are the wildlife getting edged out by a rising civilization. One man becomes the beacon of man in the war against apes, but to commit the same mistakes as our ancestors would only repeat the cycle of tragedy. In the US Air Force space station Oberon, Leo Davidson, trains a chimpanzee named Pericles in piloting a space pod. The station conducts multiple intelligence experiments and training on primates. After Leo returns Pericles to the holding area, he receives a video message from home, but it's interrupted by a power outage. When the power returns, Leo is called to the bridge. The power outage was caused by an electromagnetic storm that's drawing close to the space station. The storm bounces multiple radio signals from Earth from several time periods. The captain orders Leo to send in a primate pilot to test if the area around the storm is safe, and only then can they send a human pilot. Leo argues that he should be sent there instead, but he has no choice but to follow standard procedures. At the start of the film, we find more evidence of man's mistreatment of animals. Part of Oberon's goal is to experiment on live apes. These experiments serve the purpose of turning the intelligent apes into assisting the humans. One way they've trained the apes to assist is to test an uncharted area for safety, thus risking their lives. To them, human life is far more valuable than a chimpanzee's, therefore they offer Pericles as a sacrifice to space before even considering sending their trained pilot, Leo, into the area. With no choice, Leo sends in Pericles. Pericles' pod approaches the storm but goes off course and they lose track of the pod. Concerned, Leo suggests running some sequencing to determine what went wrong, but instead hops into a second pod to go after Pericles. He launches the pod and ignores his captain's protests. Leo reaches the storm and the space warps before revealing Pericles' pod nearby. He reports to Oberon but loses communication. A surge of energy envelops Pericles' pod and it disappears. The same surge throws Leo's pod off course, causing the power in the pod to shut down. Back in Oberon, the crew receives a mayday transmission from an old man. They attempt to communicate with Leo but fail. Another surge of energy pushes against Leo's pod and the power returns. The control system erratically jumps dates as the pod nears the planet. With the pod malfunctioning, Leo is left with no choice but to land it on the unknown planet. The pod crashes into a forest violently and sinks into a pond. Leo swims to the surface uninjured but stranded. Following a rustling sound, Leo finds a group of humans running from armored beasts. The humans are picked off one by one by apes clad in armor and riding on horses. Leo and a few humans reach a clearing, only to be met by an army of apes. While the rest of the humans are loaded into a wagon, Leo gets knocked off his feet by a chimpanzee. He's cornered by two apes, Colonel Atar and General Thade, who, to his surprise, speak in English. The apes cage the humans into a wagon pulled by other enslaved humans. Leo has found himself on a planet where apes are in control, and the humans are treated like cattle. From the way that the humans are hunted down, rallied into a wagon, and are used to pull the same wagon that carries their own kind, the apes' treatment of them is similar to how our world treats animals whom we refer to as beasts of burden. The film shows the humans pulling the wagon chained, wearing blinkers, and whipped into submission. The image makes us wonder how it feels for horses who carry humans and their cargo to a destination they didn't choose to be in. Since mankind has used horses for centuries, most of us may have not questioned this practice at all. Leo is astonished and horrified upon arriving in the town, witnessing how the apes have built a community similar to the people on Earth while the humans of this planet are mere slaves. He asks the other people in the cage for information but none of them dare speak to him. Their wagon passes by a group of young apes who throw rocks at the humans, only to be stopped by a female chimpanzee named Ari. The wagon finally arrives at its destination, where an orangutan merchant, Limbo, buys them all. The humans are hastily pulled out of the cage and shuffled like cattle. Even the children and elderly of the group are tossed around violently into their new cages. Thade arrives with his family in a tar to view the merchandise. The group of humans captured with Leo have been stealing food from Thade's orchard, to which Limbo suggests a gruesome method to scare them off if it happens again. Atar purchases a human girl to be his niece's new pet, and places the child on a collar and leash. Ari witnesses the family leave Limbo's prison, disgusted at how the other apes treat the humans. With the customers away, Limbo's men mark the humans with a branding iron until Ari interrupts their work. Even today, many ranches use branding irons on livestock. The act has been around since ancient times, and thus, millions of animals have been subjected to this practice. Most of us may not question the practice, but the movie presents a beautiful young woman as the cattle that are branded to show how cruel it is. The scene tugs into our sympathetic instinct when we see other humans in pain. But the pain is not the only cruelty that results in branding, since the person or animal who's been branded will carry the mark for the rest of their lives. Ari defends the humans and Limbo can do nothing but argue with her. While they argue, Leo grabs the discarded branding iron and holds Ari hostage. Limbo, however, does nothing but lament about having to put down one of his merchandise. Unnoticed by him, Leo quietly asks Ari for help. A blonde woman named Diana escapes from her cage during the commotion but is quickly grabbed by Limbo. Hoping to save the two, Ari buys both Leo and Diana. At Ari's home, her father, Senator Sandar, is frustrated over her new purchases. They retreat to their dinner party and leave the human slaves to clean up in the kitchen. When left alone with Diana, Leo grabs a knife and plots out his escape. He is immediately blocked by the head of the household, Krull. With Krull watching him, Leo is forced to wait on the apes, including their guests, Senator Nato and his wife, Nova. 
Atar and Thade arrive, with the latter already ranting on how he cannot visit his dying father due to his struggles with the humans. Thade is adamant about removing the humans from their lands, but the humans outnumber his army. Nato and Nova chime in with their disregard for humans, but Ari defends the humans and sees potential in them. The others laugh at her notions, however. Leo brings in their food, but Thade knocks him off his feet and forces his mouth open, sarcastically searching for a soul inside. The guests simply laugh at this. The scene disturbs Ari and so she leaves. The way Thade and the guests speak about the humans implies that they see them as no more than pests that must be removed. Thade regards them like parasites that must be exterminated for their society's expansion, while the guests merely laugh and make baseless comments. Sadly, their views are not limited to this movie. Many people view other life as pests that get in their way. Our superiority over the plants, animals, and insects made many people blind to the fact that other species are living creatures, just like us. In the garden, Ari's writing is interrupted by Thade. Thade professes his love for her, but Ari knows he's only interested in her father's influence. After she disregards his feelings, Thade jumps out and onto his horse. Upon landing, two soldiers bring something to his attention. That evening, Leo is caged along with the other slaves. He uses the knife he stole to pick the lock and freeze himself, Diana and another slave named Taval. Meanwhile, the soldiers bring Thade back to the forest where Leo's pod crashed. The soldiers witnessed the crash but didn't know exactly what it was. Knowing that only the three of them know about this, Thade attacks the soldiers to leave no witnesses. Leo and the others reach Limbo's prison to free Diana's father, Karubi, and their fellow tribesmen, Gunnar and a boy named Byrne. The group escapes and passes by drunk apes that alert the soldiers. During their escape, they pass by Thade's niece's bedroom where Diana frees the human girl that was bought as a pet earlier. The humans are then cornered by Ari and Krull. Ari plans to bring the humans back home and use her position to save them from punishment, but the humans aren't confident about this. Leo begs Ari to help them escape, and in return, he'll show her something that would change their world. Convinced, Ari agrees. They leave the child behind to hide in Ari's home as the path is too dangerous for the girl. Throughout the movie, Ari has been portrayed as a noble ape who sees humans as nearly equal to her kind. Yet, despite her power and position as the senator's daughter, she could only do so much. She has done what she can to save a few lives, but it's not enough when the entire world is still convinced of the old ways. The movie attempts to show how her small actions can trigger a greater chance to save human lives. However, Leo still had to bribe her with the promise of change before she risked her position to let them escape. During their escape, Atar spots them and Karubi sacrifices his life to allow the others to escape. Thade instructs Atar to kill all the human escapees except for Leo. Upon learning that Ari is helping the humans, Thade is angered, but he plots to lie that Ari was taken against her will to gain support from the Senate. The group reaches the area outside the city. Ari attempts to comfort a grieving Diana, but it ends with the two snapping at each other. Krall suggests for Ari to turn back, but she refuses. They reach the pond where Leo's pod crashed into. Ari is terrified of getting too close to the pond, as apes are scared of drowning. Leo dives into the pond, followed by Diana who finds the dead soldiers they had killed. Leo retrieves a bag from his pod and brings Diana back to the surface. From the bag, Leo gathers a gun and a communication device, which reveals that the Oberon is already on the planet. With his items sparking the curiosity of the others, Leo reveals that he's from another planet where apes live in zoos and humans are in control. Limbo drops onto Gunner, prompting Burn to fight back. Two of Limbo's men capture Burn and Leo fires his gun at them, surprising everyone. Threatened by the weapon, Limbo surrenders, while Ari defends Limbo's life. Leo notices him reaching for a weapon and fires at him. Instead of killing the orangutan, Leo decides to take him as a prisoner. As soon as the situation calms, Krull takes Leo's gun and breaks it, not wanting such a weapon to be at the hands of a human. Despite cooperating with the humans, Krull and Ari are still stuck in the mindset that humans are a lower class. Without full knowledge of what the gun is and what Leo intends to do with it, they immediately remove it from the equation. To them, the humans are still wild creatures and putting a weapon at their hands, despite being on their side, is too dangerous. It's a wonder how two species who possess seemingly equal intelligence and speak the same language could grow as apart as these apes in humankind. This only shows how powerful bigotry is in shaping society. Meanwhile, Sandar asks for Thade's help to find his daughter. Thade uses this to convince Sandar to declare martial law, allowing him full power to get rid of the humans from their territory. Worried for his daughter, Sandar agrees. After speaking to the senator, Thade is quickly gathered to see his father. The next day, Leo leads the group to his ship's location. He shares how on Earth, apes were nearly extinct due to deforestation, and those who survived were kept for experiments. Hearing Ari's horrified reaction to this, Leo admits that humans from his planet do worse to each other. Their intelligence brings further danger to themselves. Ari is entranced by his knowledge and seemingly flirts with Leo, which he ignores. Thade visits his dying father, Zayas, who asks about Leo, whom they believe did not come from this world. With his dying breath, Zayas reveals that in the past, apes were slaves to human masters. To convince Thade, he instructs his son to break an urn, revealing an ancient handgun inside. The gun represents how dangerous humans could become. He tells Thade to stop Leo from reaching Kalima, the forbidden area where evidence of their history could be found. Filled with rage against humans, Zayas takes his final breath. When lies are passed down long enough, they can become the truth. Thade's family has been aware of the truth about humans, but only sees the danger of their capabilities rather than the potential advantage of it. While it is true that our innovations have also caused suffering for centuries, they also open the door to better ways. Then again, when you're not the only one who benefits from these innovations, it's easy to see only the dangers of it, and thus began the prejudice that shaped this planet. Later that day, the group is nearing Kalima. The apes believe that Kalima is where the creation began and where the first of their kind, Simos, will be brought back to life. Ari, however, is skeptical over these religious stories. Seeing that they're also getting closer to Oberon, Leo pushes on. However, they're blocked by an army camp. They wait for the night, before stealing horses to cross the river. Leo fires a player gun to divert the army's attention, giving them time to escape. 
The soldiers soon take notice and chase after the group. Leo breaks their camp and sets tents on fire too, alerting Atar. Ari's horse is startled by the ablaze, causing her to drop onto the shore. Leo throws a torch into Atar's tent, burning his religious altar. Angered, Atar throws chains toward Leo, making him lose his horse. He finds Ari by the shore and carries her on his back while the other apes throw torches at them, unable to pass the waters. During this, Kroll and Atar meet eyes across the river and snarl at each other. Finally, Leo and Ari cross the river. Atar reports the group's escape to Thade. The enraged general destroys a chandelier before mounting his horse. He prepares his army for full battle and the ape soldiers march in unison to hunt down the humans. Thade's fight against humans has evolved into a war. This could only mean that the humans are no longer pests that must be hunted down, but an enemy to be defeated. To view them as an enemy shows how Thade has accepted the humans having equal abilities to them, and thus, they are a larger threat. A war sparked by this kind of intent is no different than many wars that have been waged throughout our history. Perhaps, great intelligence does truly come with danger, and this is also the case for these evolved apes. At the group's camp, Ari shares how Kroll used to be a general before he opposed Thade. He mentored Atar, but after Thade ruined his career, they became enemies. Upon seeing Diana's eye on Leo, Ari tells the man that the other three humans believe that he will save them from this planet, but Ari knows Leo only wants to go home. The next day, the group reaches Oberon, but it's in ruins. Leo desperately searches for his crew inside, finding it empty. Leo notices the word Kalima on the wall and sweeps off the dust, revealing the words, caution, live animals instead. This was the warning painted on the Oberon next to the holding facility where the apes were contained. He goes inside and sees apes' cages and the control room. To prove that it's Oberon, Leo uses the fingerprint scanner to open the control room, which works. He sets his communication device onto the control panel and powers up the Oberon to view the ship's log. On the monitor, he sees the same mayday from the old man that his crew found. He watches further and learns how his crew crash-landed on the planet while in search for him. The apes used for the experiments helped the crew survive until one named Simos took command and started a coup, thus beginning the apes' rise to power. Stunned, Leo realizes how everything began with him. His crew perished while looking for him, and the apes took over the planet after. The warp he saw before finding the planet sent him forward in time, thus witnessing the aftermath of Oberon's final journey. This is the revelation the movie has been building up to. Leo was the trigger that started this planet, and that puts a heavy weight on his shoulders. The apes in the Oberon's experiments became smart enough to realize they can take control. Upon gaining awareness of their situation and other possibilities they can take, Simos took power from the humans that cared for them. Perhaps, intelligence and self-awareness are what triggers the greed inside us, as they did with the apes. Outside, tribes of humans gather around the Oberon hoping to see the man who defied the apes. Leo, however, doesn't accept the responsibility they seek from him. Instead, he distances himself from the people still mourning over his crew's fate. That evening, Byrne notices an army of apes approaching and warns the rest. Leo orders the tribespeople to escape while he distracts the apes, being the person they want, but the tribes refuse to leave him. Diana touches Leo's cheek, sparking jealousy in Ari. Later that night, Ari enters Thade's tent and begs for his forgiveness. Thade accuses her actions as a plot to trade herself for the humans' lives. Thade rejects her and brands her hand before sending her back to the humans. While Thade assumes that Ari was trading herself to stop the war, the movie doesn't truly make this clear. Based on the previous scene, her actions were triggered by her jealousy over Diana and Leo. Her strange feelings for Leo made her desperate, perhaps to save his life from Thade, but her visiting Thade could have given him an opportunity to use her as a hostage to make Leo surrender. This possibility may not have crossed her mind due to her clouded mind. The following morning, Ari joins him as he watches the video log again. Leo notices the brand in her hand and sympathizes with her. Later that day, Leo discovers one of Oberon's fuel tanks is still full, inspiring an idea. Nearing sunset, the tribes take position as Thade's army arrives. Byrne rides a horse to the front lines despite being ordered to join the tribes. Thade sends in the first wave of his army, prompting the group to ride away. Scared, Byrne misdirects his horse, causing it to trip and trapping himself underneath. Leo rushes to help the young man, and they speed back to the ship with Leo running on foot. The apes on his trail get close to the Oberon and Leo triggers an explosion using the last fuel tank. The first wave of soldiers is thrown off by the blast and the humans charge forward attacking the injured apes one by one. Furious, Thade charges with the rest of his army. As the two armies collide, the area is filled with chaos. Ari spots Diana getting outnumbered and saves her. After finding a safe spot, Diana notices the mark on Ari's hand. Meanwhile, Atar and Krull come face to face in a heated battle. Krull is overpowered and defeated. Thade picks off the humans easily until he spots Leo. He tosses Leo and proceeds to beat the man until an explosion from above stops the war. From the sky, a shining light shoots down, revealing Pericles' pod. The pod descends into the middle of the battlefield, leaving everyone stunned. The apes bow before Pericles, believing him to be their ancestor, Simos. Pericles' descent stopping the war symbolizes how the apes also have strong religious beliefs. They stop their actions against their enemy to bow to a figure whom they believe is their ancestor reincarnated. Their evolved minds also sought a higher power beyond their understanding, much like how we humans believe in our religion. Ironically, in our world, some have used religion to spark many wars instead of stopping them. In this scene, we see how quickly war can be calmed by a symbol of hope. Leo slowly makes his way to the pod to reunite with his old friend. Leo carries a bag from the ship with a gun inside, but Pericles recognizes the Oberon and rushes in. The distraction allows Thade to attack Leo. Ari runs to his aid but is easily thrown off. Leo grabs his bag and heads inside the ship. Thade throws him forward and beats him. Pericles comes to rescue the human and Thade pushes him hard, causing Pericles to hit the wall. Leo grabs the gun and shoots Thade on the shoulder, destroying his armor. Thade knocks the gun out of Leo's hand and it flies into the control room. Before Leo can run to it, Thade beats him down and grabs the gun instead. 
Thade examines the weapon. Enticed by the power it brings, Leo raises his hand in surrender while slowly making his way to the control room. Atar arrives at the scene just as Thade points the gun at Leo. He pulls the trigger but Leo closes the bulletproof door, making the bullet bounce around the control room. Thade bangs on the door helplessly and commands Atar to kill Leo. Leo turns to Atar, revealing how humans and their intelligent apes who arrived on the planet first helped each other until Simos took control. Atar chooses Leo's side, leaving Thade to beg Ari instead. She simply reveals the mark he branded her as a reply. Trapped and outnumbered, Thade rages out inside the control room and continuously fires at the door until finally, he hides under the control panel in fear and surrender. Leo finds Pericles inside his old cage, injured. Pericles was only part of the Oberon's experiments, but he meant more to Leo, and now to the people and apes on this planet. During his time on the Oberon, he was trained and cared for, yet many may argue that he was still a test subject to his cage when the scientists didn't need him. To Pericles, however, it seemed that his cage was like a home. While he was scared, he ran inside the Oberon and struggled back in his cage to rest, like how a human retires to bed. This shows a different perspective on the Oberon's experiments on the apes. Outside, the fallen humans and apes are buried in unmarked graves, allowing every one of them to be mourned. Limbo plays with Pericles' pod, activating it. Leo discovers that the pod still works and has a record of the storm's coordinates, giving him hope of returning to Earth. Ari tries to convince him to stay, but Leo has made his choice. After bidding Ari and Diana goodbye, Leo hops into the pod, leaving Pericles in Ari's care. Both humans and apes watch as the pod disappears into space. Leo finds the electromagnetic storm and drives into it, successfully traveling back in time. He locates the planet Earth and makes his way back home. As soon as he enters the atmosphere, air traffic control warns him to abort. Leo crash lands in front of the Lincoln Memorial. He approaches the monument of Abraham Lincoln, only only to find that it is changed into a monument for General Thade. Police cars arrive, ridden by apes in uniform who corner and arrest him. The ending of this movie left many audiences scratching their heads. It attempted to copy the twist ending of the 1968 film of the same name, yet the lack of information on how Thade's influence reached Earth has viewers confused. As we've seen, Leo was the origin of this planet's fate. After he went to search for Pericles, the Oberon ship went to search for him. The electromagnetic storm that allowed time travel acted like a vortex. Therefore, when Pericles went into the storm first, he came out last. The Oberon, being the last to enter the vortex, had them exiting the time warp first, thus sending them earlier in the timeline. The crew members attempted to survive on the planet with the help of the intelligent apes they've trained. But when one ape, Simos, realized that they could take control, the apes turned on the caretakers and claimed absolute power. The human tribes on this planet are descendants of the crew while the ape society fabricated the stories of how Simos was the first ape. The dusty walls of the Oberon led them to naming their origin Kalima, which became the center of their religion. Leo was sent further into the timeline which sparked the events of the movie. Planet of the Apes attempts to show what it would be like if humanity was at the other end of the reins. The abuse inflicted on animals on Earth is shown against the humans in this film. It forces the audience to wonder about the fates of the species we assume to be lower than ours. Despite some of the movie's misgivings, it can still inspire others to think about the world's natural ecosystem, instead of just focusing on the society we forced into it. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.